Hey guys, so I recently did a mini course called Troubleshoot Your House Plants, and I also included that in the Houseplant Masterclass. So today, I thought I'd actually show you two plants and we could figure out together what may actually be wrong with them. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So today I have this Pachira Aquatica, quite a large one. I've had this money tree with me for, oh, I don't know. It could be like my eighth or ninth year with it. And then not to be totally overshadowed or dwarfed by the Pachira Aquatica, but I have this Colin Coe right here, which, you know, these two, uh, the reason why I brought out these two plants is that they are going through a similar issue. And you may look at these and say, you know what, they actually look quite good. You know, the, the leaves look good, they look strong. But the problem that's happening with the money tree and what happened with this plant, which I've already taken it out of um, its original planter, is that it was just falling out of its planter. And, you know, what's common uh, that could happen with plants is that if you're not watering them super frequently, because maybe they don't need to be watered that frequently, the uh, soil surface starts to get really dry and crusty, and sometimes it's really har hard to re-wet that soil again, especially if you're using a substrate like peat, for instance, or if it's like all peat or mainly peat, then it starts to get crusty, dry, and stick together so that even when you're watering, you can imagine this in a planter, even when you're watering it, it kind of beads off of this and the roots never get water. Now, that might not show any stress, like it hasn't shown any stress in this Colin Coe because the Colin Coe could exist without water for a very long tree time. And a money tree, I found, doesn't need water all that much either. But it is starting to, you know, kind of tip over in the planter. And so what I just need to do is take this out. And it is pretty well rooted in there, even though it's, uh, it looks like the leaning tower of Pisa. So I'm gonna take this out, and I may get my table a little dirty here, but that's okay. And I'm a big advocate for taking plants out of their planter and inspecting the roots. It's, it's a good routine to do. You don't need to do it all that often. I'm not saying that you have to do it every year, but some plants may need it more than others. And you know, because they're in these closed containers, you know, oftentimes some issues could happen within the roots. Okay, yeah, so here we go. Now it's a good idea to try to break off as much as possible the clogs of soil, the clods of soil that you have here, without damaging too much of the roots. Now mind you, I am doing this in the non-growing season and I'm also a big advocate for trying to do things in the growing season because as they're growing, the, if you break some roots, then you know that they'll probably put out m new growth and new roots. But in the winter months, you know, hey, if, if they're looking like they're having some problems or about to have some problems, so this is, a, I would say, a little bit more preventative, then you could do it too, you know, then. It, it probably won't be too stressful for a plant like this. Now what's interesting, is that there are three stems of this Pachira aquatica. Some of these are more well-rooted than the others. And I think that could be part of the problem. And again, one of the issues that I have, and maybe you have this issue too, is that I have a tendency, especially when I'm watering really quickly, I'm going to take my watering can and I'm gonna only water one area. And if I'm watering one area all the time, that's closest to me, then maybe those roots are going to be more well-rooted than the other side. So what you want to do is actually water all the way around your planter pot so that every single one will be rooted very well. So yeah, as you could see here, this one, it has one like deep root, but the rest are more well-rooted. So I'm gonna just pull this out, let that sit right here. And I'm gonna check out this soil. Yeah, this is, this is pretty dry. So I'm going to change out this soil for this Pachira Aquatica. I'm gonna actually use some of what I have in here because not all of it's so bad, but I might just add some new stuff in there as well. So 
going to put that out like this and I'm going to dump out a bunch of this. Now, typically I would say clean out the planter pot, especially if you think you had um, an insect issue like mealybugs or scale or thrips, but I haven't had any of that problem with my Petura aquatica, so I am not going to really worry about that at all. Okay, so I've taken some of this substrate out. I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna break up anything in here that might have been not aerated enough. You can see I have some broken bits of terracotta planter in here. That's good if you wanna have a little bit more aeration or sometimes folks will put like the terracotta um, bit just over the hole so that the water could still go through but the soil doesn't go through. All right, now I'm gonna take these guys Sometimes I like to soak them in water a little bit first, but this bowl is a little, little too small for these guys. What I'm gonna do instead is make sure that I thoroughly water this. And I'm gonna put them in here. And I'm going to add some soil. I have some of this, it looks like it's dried out a little bit. So again, that's a really good indication to basically tell you, wait, where am I? <laughs> this is a good indication to tell you that some of this wasn't getting some of the water. And again, that could be a sign of poor watering. So you're only watering on one side of the plant. And this is a, a pretty large planter. So you wanna make sure that you get water all the way around this. I just add a little bit more here and there. And you can already see that this is pretty well rooted even though I didn't water it in. And oftentimes watering it in will keep the plant in the ground, well rooted into the ground. Now I've left a, a, quite a bit of t um, space up top of this, uh, of this terracotta planter. You could add a little bit more soil if you want. You could add probably another inch of soil, but I'm going to keep this a little bit lower so that way when I am watering this plant, it's not going to splash around on the uh, wooden shelf that it's on. So here I am, I'm gonna just water really thoroughly all the way around and even in between this money tree. I think that was pretty sufficient watering, so I probably will see some water coming out at the base, although this is a lot of soil. Nothing yet. So I'm gonna do a little bit more watering. And you know, this does take time. So when you're in a rush, you know, understandably, maybe you don't water it as thoroughly as you want to, or you should be doing. And that just happens over time again and again, and might actually cause a problem with your plant. Now this is really heavy. I could feel that some of the water is being um, held quite a bit. So I am not going to water this, but again, that's just like the feel of it. Um, it's quite heavy, like usually when this doesn't have water in, it's a lot less heavy, even though this is a terracotta planter and it has some weight to it. So you could get a feel for it. Feel your planter when it doesn't have water. Then when you water more thoroughly, feel what your planter feels like after that and get a sense of like what that weight might actually be because then you say, oh, well, that's a good, a good way to take the, uh, the reading of whether I watered it sufficiently enough or you could wait for about 10 to 20% of the water to come out. And I see just some of that water dripping out of there right now. So that tells me that I did a pretty good job watering this plant. All right, with that Petura Aquatica aside, let's move to this little guy, which is my Colin Coe. And this wasn't even the planter that it was in. I just set it up in this planter. And you can see I'm breaking this up right here. It's super dry. I mean, I don't even know if any of these roots are even still alive, but they must be because the plant is looking pretty good. And again, this is more of a preventative thing. You know, the plant was looking good. It wasn't any showing any sign of ailments other than the fact that it was starting to tip over in its planter with both the Colin Coe and the, the money tree. 
All right, so I broke off some of the soil clods right here. Yeah, and the roots, you know, the roots don't look bad. There's no mushy bits. I mean, I have my little snip here if I needed to snip anything off. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. I'm just getting a little bit of soil on these velvety leaves, which <laughs> won't look so aesthetically pleasing. And so I'm going to take some of this new soil. And essentially, we're just doing the same thing. It's just a different plant, right? So it gets a new pot, too. Because the, the planter that I had this one in was a little shallow to begin with. So it was probably not easy for this plant, especially as it gets a little bit more top heavy, right? It starts to, to pull itself over. So when I first got this, it was only two, two leaves essentially. So it was a nice little squat plant. But what happens with some of our plants? They grow, right? <laughs> you know, much to our uh, pleasure, sometimes to our dismay because some of the, our succulents, for instance, they start to grow and they maybe don't look as cute or whatever. But um, you could always cut them back or you know start them fresh again by taking a little cutting of the leaf. In the case of this Kalanchoe, that's how it will propagate. And I'm just getting the soil all the way around, trying to avoid the nice velvety leaves because if you get the soil on these leaves, like I said, it kind of, it's like lint, it kind of sticks to the leaves. And you wanna get the leaves um, as much above the soil as possible because if you're watering the leaves, sometimes it leaves water stains on the leaves especially like fuzzy leaves, like African violets and begonias, those are notorious. They could get like water stains on the leaves and um, maybe not for these leaves, but for African violets and begonias because they're thinner, sometimes they'll rot the leaves and they'll just kind of sit there on the soil. And if there's not really good airflow in your house, which is a problem for us, you know, especially in the winter months, there's a lot of lack of airflow. It's not like we have our windows open, then they're not gonna dry out and then we we'll probably invite some fungal or bacterial infection. Okay, so I'm going to water this in. This probably will take a little less water. That's it. So he's upright, he's looking healthy, and uh, hopefully this will be a nice new home for this plant. So guys, I hope that was helpful for you. And if you ever wanna know more, you could look at Troubleshoot Your House Plants, my new mini course, and also the House Plant Masterclass. All right guys, take care, bye. I'd like to shout out to Squarespace, who is my sponsor for this video. Now, all of my websites, including homesteadbrooklyn.com, houseplantmasterclass.com, and even my personal website over at summerrain.net are all built on Squarespace's platform. Now, this is for obvious reasons. They are this all-in-one platform that offers up slick, modern designs that provide incredible user experience. Now, you could customize their already primo templates, integrate your social media seamlessly, and even send out emails. And oh yeah, if you ever need help, their customer service is dope. So if you're interested in checking them out, you can use my link, squarespace.com slash summerrain for 10% off your purchase. Check out the link in the description below. And if you're seeking more information about gardening outdoors and homesteading in the country, then check out our new channel over at Flock Finger Lakes. See you there.